Hey, what's up guys? In this video, I'm gonna go over best ball strategies, kind of share with you some of the tricks that I'm using and some of the stuff that I've learned from professionals that have won $100,000 payouts and six figure checks off of one entry. Um, what I have pulled up here is the price breakdown. I wanted to go over the rules of best ball before we get into the strategy part. I'm gonna launch a live draft and kind of queue up the guys that I've been targeting and share with you guys why I'm drafting them. Overall, this is gonna be an extremely helpful video. If you can invest a little bit of your time today, it will pay off. Watch this video and go draft. I promise you uh, it's gonna pay off in a big way. But first thing that I wanted to go over here is how top heavy the prizes are. So really what we're looking at here is the final round of the playoffs. Not just the final round of the playoffs, but like finishing pretty high in the final round. So it's very, it's a very long shot. So you really want to go after those high risk, high reward guys, the guys that maybe you wouldn't draft in your redraft leagues. Maybe guys coming off of injury or there's injury rumors about them, like maybe like Michael Thomas type guys, where Michael Thomas could be a top receiver in fantasy the second half of the season, but he's probably not going to play the first half of the season. So people that are just as risky as you can possibly find with high reward, so high upside too, because everything has to go perfectly. And my first bit of advice is draft as if everything is going perfectly. So what I mean by that is if you take Christian McCaffrey, don't take his backup. Don't handcuff him. Because if, if Christian McCaffrey gets hurt, your team is dead anyway. So you're not coming in first place. If you draft Christian McCaffrey, he gets hurt. So like don't draft Ezekiel Elliott and then Tony Pollard because you're not going to need both of them. Draft either Zeke or either Tony Pollard. And then basically if the other one gets hurt, that team is going to carry a tremendous amount of value. Um, stack your receivers with your quarterback. Don't draft a QB unless you own a receiver or a tight end or running back on his team, or you plan to draft some of them later in the draft. So there's certain guys like Mahomes where before you draft Mahomes, you're going to pick up Kelsey or Tyreek Hill. If you don't get Hill or Kelsey, there's really not much incentive to draft Mahomes. Of course, you could get Mikko Hardman later in the draft. Um, but yeah, I mean, all of the chiefs offensive players are going before Mahomes, So it doesn't make sense to pick up Mahomes if you don't have those players. And then on the flip side, Kyler Murray, you can really get a lot of the Cardinals players later in the draft. So if Kyler falls to you, then maybe you say, okay, this is going to be a Cardinals team. So I'm kind of building teams based on how the draft falls to me. I might build a Dallas Cowboys team, one draft, then a Pittsburgh Steelers team. And it's not that each team that I draft is associated with one NFL team. I might have a Pittsburgh Steelers team combined with a Jacksonville Jaguars team. So I might end up getting like a bunch of Steelers stacks and a bunch of Jacksonville stacks. And that's what that team turns out to be. But you don't want to reach on the ADP. So if you reach on the ADP, the problem with it is like, say you reach on Mahomes and you pick him at the 20th pick. If his ADP is 35, Say Mahomes has the best season of all time, right? Which could happen. That's best case scenario for you. While you just spent a 20th pick on him, everybody else was getting him 30th to 45th, right? I have some leagues where I got him in the early 40s. Well, guess who I picked up with my 20th pick? A superstar receiver. Guess who you picked up with your 40th pick that you should have spent Mahomes on? Maybe a lesser superstar receiver, right? So understanding ADP and not reaching is incredibly important too. Let me see if I can go over the contest info. I wanted to see, this is what I wanted to show you guys. So the first 14 weeks of the season as Northwestern scores a touchdown, shake my head. How did this game go over, bro? So frustrating. So I just lost a free play. It happens. We won the premium easy though. So take that. Very frustrating. Um, all right, back to what I was talking about. Uh, round one is going to be weeks. I think it goes through it down here. Here we go. Round one is going to be weeks one through 14. You're in a 12-man group. This is the group that you draft with. You have to finish top two to advance. DraftKings says it a little bit different in round two, three, and four. 
But the way that the puppy three is and the way that it is on underdogfantasy.com is round two will be an 18-person group. So you're up against 17 other people that have finished top two in their league. So let's just say that Tony Pollard's a league winner. Let's pretend that Zeke gets hurt week one and Tony Pollard is a top five running back. And everybody that drafted Tony Pollard, 90% of them finished top two in their leagues. Now round two is going to be full of a bunch of teams with Tony Pollard. So if you drafted Tony Pollard with the 100th pick, and then the other teams in this 18-person group drafted Tony Pollard with the 130th pick, who do you think has the massive advantage in round two? The person that spent the 130th pick on Tony Pollard, right? So that's why ADP is so important. But that's kind of how it's going to flow. And round two is NFL Week 15. So it is important, not super important, but it's important to at least look at the schedule and see what games should have higher scoring games because those are probably the stacks that you'd prefer to build if you had a choice. I think the Cardinals are a great team to have stacked. I think Kyler Murray and if you can get a couple of his weapons, maybe A.J. Green, um, if you can get Hopkins, if he lands on one of your first or second round picks, that would make sense. Um, but yeah, that's uh, that's kind of how I feel about that. Of course, you're going to have to get through round 13, which is week 16, and then uh, round four, 230-person group. So if we go back to the prizes real quick, 230-person. So if you finish top 230, you did a phenomenal thing. And you might only get 200 bucks. So when you get to that final round, you better have a team built to perform in week 17. So you can finish top 10 and not top 50. Because there's a massive difference there. But uh, let's get into a draft. So I can show you uh, some of the things that I'm looking at. I think one thing that's huge is understanding when these tournaments start and when they close. So I think the Puppy 3 started about two weeks ago or so. So there may have been some teams that uh, got Gus Edwards like in the 10th round, which is a probably the most significant injury that I've seen. Um, but yeah, this, this underdog platform is really, really cool. I'm gonna start queuing players up as we get our ADP. But players that I've most regularly drafted um, let me queue them up as I see them. I mean, I've been getting Darren Waller a lot. Uh, I've been getting Kyle Pitts a lot. I don't know if it's going to let me queue him up yet. Okay, there we go. So I've been getting uh, Kyle Pitts a lot as well. I'm super high on Kyle Pitts. Um, if he ends up doing well, I'm going to make a lot of money. If he doesn't end up doing well, I'm going to have a lot of teams where I'm disappointed. But I love getting both of these guys when I can. I try, I, I'll try. i reach on Waller because you have to be a little bit more aggressive with him. But on Kyle Pitts, I, I let him fall to me. I've been getting him pick 49 to 55-ish. And when I get both of these guys, it's such an absolute luxury because I can account for them to cover the tight end position. And then a lot of weeks, they're both going to score a touchdown and they can cover the flex uh, position as well. So depth is less of an issue for me at the running back and receiver position. So I'll scroll down here, kind of show you guys that I like. Um, one thing that I saw with James Robinson and Gus Edwards is James Robinson's ADP when the Travis Etienne went down. His ADP was about 65, and then it's gradually dropped down. So his true ADP probably should be around like 31. I think on ESPN and Yahoo, that's where they have him ranked. So even though I am competing against teams that have drafted him like 60, 55, drafting him get at his ADP of 47.9 gives me a huge edge on winning the actual league and advancing to that first round of the playoffs, which does entice me. But on the flip side, whenever you see a guy's ADP drop significantly like that, um, like maybe Gus Edwards did, which let me see if I can find Gus Edwards. See, Gus Edwards, is he's really getting drafted around 55 in most of these leagues, but his ADP is still 66 because it's an average of when he was going before J.K. Dobbins went down. Um, I don't really like drafting these two guys just because, yes, they'll increase my chance of winning the league, but I'm really banking on them to flop because if they don't flop, then what's going to happen is the teams that got them, 
like with the 100th pick and the 120th pick, are just going to absolutely murk the rest of us because none of us are getting them at that ADP. So you got to think there's a team out there that spent their 66th pick on Antonio Brown and then they picked their 120th pick, Gus Edwards. And then there might even be a team where they got James Robinson like 80th and T. Higgins 45th you're just not going to be able to compete with them. Hopefully that makes sense. I've kind of driven that home a lot. Um, some of the guys that I think are really, really good, uh, well-priced players. Well, Justin Herbert and Aaron Rodgers right there at 83, 84, I think is absolutely phenomenal. Um, Michael Thomas, his ADP is a little bit low, but I've been seeing him fall to like the 100th pick. So if you can get Michael Thomas at 100, I think it is worth it. Um it's tough because most likely he's not going to have the prettiest season. But if he comes back and he does damage, I mean, it's going to be insane because you could get first or second round uh, production out of him. Marquez Callaway, absolutely love drafting this dude. Uh, I was getting him at like 103, 110 even. I think the, the best price I got him at. I'm even reaching for him now at 90. I think he's going to produce like some of these receivers we see going 40 to 60, you know, in that range, I think he's going to produce like a, a top 50 fantasy player. Um, like Ronald Jones here a lot. I mean, you're getting the number one running back on what's going to be a top offense in Tampa Bay. Of course, he has a split um, with two others. The good news for him is it looks like um, Giovanni Bernard will be battling a high ankle sprain. Not off to a good start. Uh, but yeah, I mean, when I draft Ronald Jones and when I draft these guys uh, down here, I'm basically targeting guys that have extremely high upside if one other running back or receiver gets hurt. For receivers, they don't get hurt as frequently. So I personally like to draft receivers early because they're a lot more safer, a lot less likely to get injured. And then when I'm drafting pick 100 to 150 or 100 to 200 really, to win a million dollars and to win this whole thing, or 200k, whatever the top prize was, you really need the guys in this range to benefit from an injury. Or just, you need them to outperform their expectations by a ton. Um, but the way that they do that typically is through the other running back that they're featured with getting hurt. And it's just, it's way more likely that, say, you know, Leonard Fournette gets hurt and Ronald Jones becomes a top 25 fantasy player than it is um, that Devontae Parker somehow becomes a top 25 fantasy player. I'm not even sure if the other receivers, if like Will Fuller got hurt, I'm not even sure if Devontae Parker would jump to that top, you know, 25 level. Like, at least with Ronald Jones, yes, it is a long shot. I'm not saying that's going to happen. But there is a sliver of a chance that Ronald Jones could be like a top 25 fantasy player. Um we saw it with uh, we saw it with the Jacksonville running back last year, James Robinson. We saw we saw him uh, explode and and he was a league winner. Same with Miles Gaskin. Like these are the types of players that we're trying to get lucky with. I think Tony Pollard's a great one to have at least some exposure to. Um, personally, I'm picking Sony Michelle here because I think that Sony, without any injuries could be a top 50 fantasy player. So to get him at 117, I think is insane, man. But that's kind of just my mindset um, down here. And then once I get to the 150 to 200 range, I'm targeting guys uh, at the receiver position usually. Um, although the one running back that I like to pick up down here, well, James White's a pretty nice one. Um, but the one running back I like to pick up down here other than if I'm just throwing darts with backup running backs that could benefit from injuries. Tyson Williams is pretty uh, intriguing at 193. But the one that I really love that I'm trying to get to is Malcolm Brown. I think Malcolm Brown could be the guy in Miami. I think he could seal the show. I think he could be the Miles Gaskin of this year. He's always been really, really good in uh, L.A. with the Rams. It's just he's kind of been behind you know Todd Gurley and Cam Akers and guys like that. But when I'm drafting receivers uh, 150 to 200, I am going for guys that could get like 
10 fantasy points in one reception. So say they catch a deep ball, a 50-yard touchdown pass. I mean, that's 50 yards, so that's five points, a reception, so that's half a point, and a touchdown. So that's like an 11.5-point reception. Plus, say they catch a five-yard pass, a 10-yard pass, they get three receptions that game. I mean, guys that fit into that category are like Deshaun uh, Jackson. Um, I also like, who else do I like? I'm kind of. I'm kind of losing my mind that this draft hasn't filled yet. Usually it fills a lot quicker. It's Friday night at midnight. Maybe people are doing something. I don't know what's going on. I don't know if it's a glitch or what. Uh, but it's kind of fine for this video because I can just focus on this. Sammy Watkins falls into that category, especially with injuries with Baltimore. But with guys down here, I'm just looking for guys that might be able to plug into my lineup maybe three to five times throughout a 17-game season. And then I'm also really intrigued with whatever QB ends up falling to me. I mean, I try to get exposure to as many QBs as possible. I don't really, like, try to force it too much, except for with Justin Herbert. Um, love Justin Herbert. Uh, love um, Aaron Rodgers and love Matt Stafford. Those are, like, three guys that I just love their draft position. Um, but whatever QBs I get, I, I'm trying to usually complete stacks in this range. So if I can pick up, like, if I have... Russell Wilson, I'll get Dwayne Askridge. He's the Seahawks' third receiver. And then if something happens to DK or Lockett, Askridge runs a 4-3-40. He's probably going to be a pretty big-time fantasy receiver. And then the idea is that when we look at all my teams, when it's all said and done, um, whichever team had like the perfect draft where all of the picks up here didn't get hurt, and then all of the picks right here benefited from injury, and then the picks from here ended up catching deep touchdown passes at the right time. That's the one that's going to be making me rich at the end of the day. So the best best ball players basically put a couple thousand bucks in. They grind out all these drafts and each draft they're giving themselves a really good chance. I'm going to leave this draft, show you guys a recap. Um, they're giving themselves a really good chance to, or at least a sliver of a chance to win big. So if I go to my completed drafts, Let's just see uh, one here. And they're not all pretty, like four quarterbacks. I don't know what I was doing here. Uh, usually I like to get three QBs, four running backs, and nine receivers. Yeah, this isn't my best draft, but it looks like I stacked uh, Deshaun. No, it looks like I just built a Herbert double stack with Keenan Allen and Mike Williams. So that's better than nothing. Um, didn't really get the, well, got a pretty solid running back room because McCaffrey will start every week. And then between these four, somebody should score one or two touchdowns each week. Um, receiver is just not that deep, especially you look at like week seven, we're going to be missing three of them. So that's kind of sketchy. Hopefully a running back or a tight end can step up that week, but don't even have the best tight end room here. Um, so this isn't my best draft, but I wanted to show you like some examples of like some of the other players that are drafting. So if we look at like these two guys, let's see their quarterback situation. Well, he's got Kyler, so he's probably good. But this guy's got Trey Lance and Ryan Tannehill. And that's all he drafted was Trey Lance and Ryan Tannehill. Think of how many weeks where Ryan Tannehill's not going to go off. I mean, there's probably going to be five to eight weeks that he doesn't score very highly in fantasy. I know a lot of people are high on the tight ends. They might disagree. But uh, Kirk Cousins is another one right there. I mean, this guy got Kyler, so this guy's in a much better position. Um, it's a bad example, but this lineup might be kind of in trouble here. I mean, that might not be the best position to be in to have two QBs. One of them's not starting, and one of them is on a team that's potentially not going to not going to be doing a ton. I mean, I know they brought in, um, you know, they brought in the big receiver from Atlanta. I forget people's names. I'm sorry. Julio Jones. But yeah, I'm not as big of a fan of that team. And then if we look at like this team right here, Casey Hall, I think he has five receivers. Let's see. One, two, three, four, five. So he's got six receivers and one is Alan Lazard. 
So he's going to have a lot of weeks, man, where he's going to have a pretty weak flex, which is not good. In best ball, you really want to, you know, you really want to be proficient in these last four rounds. So you look at what I did. I got Deshaun Jackson. He's a guy that can contribute, you know, maybe five weeks a year. Malcolm Brown, he's going to be the dude in Miami. And then I just put two QBs in here to make sure that I'm really scoring high in my QB um, position, which I don't know what happened here. Usually I don't get four uh, quarterbacks, so I don't know what my train of thought was there. Um, but Mark was Callaway, Jerry Judy, Mike Williams, Keenan Allen, Justin Jefferson. So I have a really, really strong uh, receiver and running back. But what I was trying to show you there, and maybe I should have prepared a little better to find a league where I could figure it out faster. But, like, there's going to be, like, three dead teams in every league. So you're competing for two slots against 12 teams, well, 11 other teams, but three of them are dead. So you're really competing against eight other people for two slots. So you have a very high chance, if you know what you're doing and you know how to construct a roster, you have a very high chance of advancing into the playoffs. Once you advance into the playoffs, you're at least getting your initial investment back. And then if one of your teams can advance and go far, that's when you get that life-changing money where you can get that six-figure check off of a $5 investment. So I absolutely love best ball. I love it because it's so scalable. Um, you can really draft so many times. I have it memorized now where I'm just on autopilot. And there are $250 leagues. So if you want to invest 100 k in fantasy football, you can do it through best ball. Whereas before best ball, like, you could get into high stakes leagues, but you could never invest a hundred K into fantasy football. So it was a little it was a little I guess that was the limiting factor. But now you can, so it's a really cool thing. And um, full disclosure for me, I got a couple thousand bucks down into best ball, but I'm not gonna be able to invest that big money until next year. But this is kinda like a practice run for me this year, and I mean hopefully I, I win a hundred K or more. But if I don't, next year is when I'm really going to make the push. Uh, so I'm pumped, man. I love best ball. Let me know in the comment sections what you guys think of this video, what you think of best ball. Obviously, if you're watching this, you probably have a game plan. So I'd love to hear who else is out there like grinding best ball drafts every single night, every day, like I am. Uh, thank you guys for watching to the end of the video. If you made it this far, if anybody even watched to the end. Uh, drop a comment though. I really want to interact with you guys in the comment sections. Uh, have a good rest of your day and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.